Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not your captain today. So <laughs> as is evident today, today, women are the backbone of our society, yet their contribution has been ignored for centuries. Nevertheless, this is in the process of changing. I stand before you today as an example how a strong, dedicated, and ambitious woman can make a change provided she gets the opportunity. I do not come from a wealthy family, and my parents have nothing to do with aviation. I grew up to my mom repeatedly saying that opportunities do not come to the fortunate ones, or only to males, but for those who refuse to fail. Well, I reached day 12, we're talking about like 25 years back. You don't have to do the calculations, please. <laughs> so I reached grade 12, and I really didn't know what to do, what to study afterwards. As I was good in mathematics, my father advised me to go into math. I joined the American University of Beirut, and I started studying mathematics. I finished my first year, and I was an A student in mathematics, so I did really good. During my second year, like one month after starting my second year, a friend, a colleague of mine who was also studying mathematics, he came into the math department carrying a newspaper that mentioned an ad saying that Middle East Airlines is recruiting pilots, both females and male, females and males. And he was like sarcastically saying, a woman cannot drive cars. They cannot operate a washing machine. You want them to fly planes? I really got agitated and I started to argue against him. And the argument got really tense. Until eventually, I channeled him. I told him, you know what? Let's both apply to this whatever entrance exam for pilots. I will see who will pass. We applied, along with 2,000 applicants. And guess what? Today, I fly planes, and he does not. <laughs> Passing the entrance exam was the easiest part of all. Because afterwards, I had to convince my father. <laughs> so I went home, and I told my dad that I passed this exam, which we did at the, at the American University of Beirut. And I told him, I want to quit mathematics, and I want to go into aviation. And definitely, it was a big no. For him, I had to finish my university, get married, have kids. And whatever career I choose should not cause any conflict to my family life. So I tried every possible means. I begged, I cried, I nagged, I tried everything. And he said, no. So I went back to AUB, I dropped my courses, I packed my things, took a taxi, went back home, and I told my father, you either find me a husband, or I want to be a pilot. Luckily, he couldn't find me a husband. <laughs> so here I am. I went to Scotland, studied uh, aviation in Scotland, even, back, even there, like 25 years back, we were 800 male pilots studying and two females. And it wasn't easy at all, even in Scotland. Like we normally say that in the Western world, it's a bit easier. It was tough. So like in one month later, I had to pack all my things, all my skirts, all my dresses. I had to cut my hair really short and forget, forget about my feminine side. I finished my training and came back to Beirut. And then... I had to face several challenges, of which three really stood the most. My very first challenge was getting accepted in my society and among my colleagues. For afterwards, a cockpit, the term in itself is masculine. It's the pit of a cock. So to have a woman sit in a cockpit, like it was a bit intimidating to them. It wasn't easy at all. I heard several sarcastic comments. Even from flight engineers in certain countries, they wouldn't even accept to address me. And also the passengers, like, oh, I can't tell you about the comments. I even had one passenger who left the plane just because the captain was a woman. <coughs> Honestly, I had to detach myself in order to face these comments. Because like, I thought at that time, like, it, was, it could be any other girl sitting in my seat, and she would have been receiving the same comments. So just looking at the problem objectively made it a bit easier. But still, it wasn't that easy. Now, the second challenge was that which my father was really worried about. And that was the compromise between the family and the career. Like normally, any woman who has a job, she would go to her job. And if any incident or accident happens or if her son is sick, she can just pick a phone and call. 
or she can just leave her work and go and check. With our career, it's completely different. Once we're up there, we're just up there. We're disconnected from the world down below. And also, I cannot go to a flight without having a good sleep, without having a good sleep like at night. At the times, I have to travel like for two or three days. And for example, one incident I had, I had organized a birthday party for my son, and I traveled to London. The birthday party was supposed to be the second day when I returned. I reached London, and a volcano erupted in Iceland, and I was stuck there for one week. So, like many, compromising between the family and my career wasn't easy at all. But there's something in Lebanon or in the Middle East region which we don't like really appreciate. It's a blessing actually. It's the extended family and the humanitarian touch we have in this country. You always have a grandmother, a mother, a sister, a friend, a neighbor to count on. And also, my husband played a very important role. He really backed me up. So he helped me in raising the kids, he really helped me and he pushed me into keeping up my career. And he also pushed me to go back to my university where I finished my master's in mathematics, master's in aviation psychology, and now I'm doing my master's in philosophy of physics. Now the third challenge was getting more women into the aviation field or into any other field. Because I believe that I was an, like a prototype, it was an experiment. And if no women join the aviation field, it means that I have failed. So that's why I started recently going for talks, for awareness campaigns, universities, schools, and exposing the idea that a woman can be a pilot. And I even had to address little girls on the plane. Like I would, a girl, a daughter, and a son for like a little girl and her brother would come into the cockpit. And it's always like you would ask the girl, would you like to be a pilot when you grow up? And it's always, mm-mm. But the boy, it's always yes. So I had to like do some awareness campaigns concerning this issue. Eight years back, Amelia Earhart was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. Until today, she is still an icon and inspiration. Firm and strong, she faced challenges that men found daring. Today, we can replace Amelia's name with any, of, any woman's name. It all starts with a dream. With a little determination and some dedication, all dreams can come true. I have to leave with a message. That was, that's why I told them to put it up, and I'm going to read it. Today, women are no longer dependent beings. They are dreamers, achievers, and fully independent and successful individuals. Dream big, ladies. Believe in yourselves and your abilities. And remember that whenever the ride starts to get bumpy and the horizon begins to darken, success is there just around the corner. And men, it's time you recognize women as equally qualified individuals. Give them opportunities, sit back, and behold the wonders they can accomplish. Thank you.